Hi, uh, we are here in sunny Barcelona and we are here with Micron, VP of Marketing, Chris Moore nice or Christopher you. Moore, <laughs> nice whatever you say. You, yes. Nice to see you, Neil. <laughs> Thank you uh, for uh, being here and I would like to discuss more about the overall general AI trends which are going on and AI at the edge is becoming super important with mm -hmm. the, all the AI wave and uh, we have seen Qualcomm launching Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 which is uh, bringing, taking AI to the next level, especially at the edge. Mm -hmm. So, but still, uh, apart from compute, memory is super important. Yeah. Can you talk about your contribution and, and we see there are a flurry of announcements from you. Yeah. So if you can talk about that. Yeah, well, thanks for the opportunity. Always great to see you. Yeah, um, yeah we've had, uh, today we officially launched our next generation UFS 4.0 product, uh, which is a storage device available in 256, 512, and one terabyte. Uh, in this very unique 9 by 13 package. Wow. Very, very small, about the size of your pinky, wow. pinky nail there. <laughs> um, and you can put a terabyte in that, uh, and the Z height is yeah. down to 0.8 millimeters, so very small. So uh, that'll help uh, designers free up board space, mm -hmm. uh, add battery life, and battery life is going to be really, really Super important important. in the AI age. Um, and so, again, some of the trends we're seeing uh, with AI that I find really interesting is, yes, Qualcomm and MediaTek have both announced these great products yeah. that are AI capable. Um, but what we're really seeing is innovation from the OEMs. Mm. How are they taking this AI and going beyond what Android is providing? Uh, the Honor Magic 6, which was announced on Sunday, uh, contains micron memory and storage inside of it. Um, that was one of the things that we were able to announce today. And our memory and storage help enable the Magic 6 to do what they're calling intent-based AI, which I find really, really fascinating and interesting and, and a wave of the future for phones, not just an incremental way to edit your pictures and make it better, which is great, yeah. but actually how you interact and interface with your phone itself uh, to the point where you can just take a text message, grab it and drop it into Google Maps, and it's going to tell you how to walk where you're trying to go. Right. right. It doesn't, you take no steps at all. You just plug it and go. Yeah. Just really amazing stuff, um, innovated by partners uh, like Honor. We, of course, have joint labs, work very, very closely with them. Really need to see. Samsung, as you know, launched the S24 series, mm -hmm. uh, Galaxy AI, about a month ago. And we're actually designing that lineup as well, uh, which we were announced earlier today also. Uh, just really exciting stuff that you're seeing from these tier one OEMs where they're truly driving innovation and differentiating in terms of how AI is gonna be used in the future. The coolest thing to me is that this is nascent. This yeah. is just, it's we're time. really just enabling the hardware today, right? Right, And that's what like our UFS4 product uh, is able to do, is with very low power, transfer speeds at four plus gigabytes a second, great stuff, new firmware features that'll make your phone seem like it was new even after you've had it for six mm -hmm. months. Um, great innovation like that, helping enabling AI at the hardware level so that throughout this year, you're just going to see more and more apps being developed. You're going to see more and more integration uh, into the phone with the way it's, it's being used uh, from fun things like stable diffusion where you can create memes uh, to uh, now there's video diffusion that you're yeah. seeing out there, which yeah. is also very interesting um, to, as I said, how you actually interact with the phones, the interface, all of that. I think the world is just really going to open up and it's pretty exciting. Yeah. So you almost have, the congratulations first, you almost have a clean sweep on the first generation AI phones, mm -hmm. which you are seeing right now, yeah. uh, especially flagships, right? So uh, can you explain a little bit more, like what is the role you play with respect to enabling these features uh, at scale for these sure. players? Sure, um, I believe the Magic 6 said that their LLM is running seven to eight billion parameters. Mm. Well, how are you gonna upload seven to eight billion parameters, right? Uh, if you're running at four gigabyte a second, that takes two seconds to upload it. To just from the storage into the memory mm -hmm. itself. And then you have to execute it from the memory uh, to the NPUs. So the speeds and the size of the storage mm -hmm. are now becoming critical. Um, in our labs, we've shown that as you increase the DRAM speeds, mm -hmm. you get more tokens per second when you're running an LLM. Um, and so our customers are wanting to go from you know, LP5, which has been the standard for years, yeah. to LP5X, to now, the 9.6 gigabit per second that we launched last November to actually get better throughput mm -hmm. on the LLM. So it's very, very mission critical. Uh, in addition to the storage side, 
we're going to have multiple LLMs, multiple foundational models stored um, in the device itself because you're not yeah. going to be able to drop that from the 5G network in a period of time that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so the speed of the storage and the side of the storage is also getting impacted. Right. It's really great. It's, it's not like, you know, 100 megapixel cameras are great, 8K video is great, but it's been kind of, you know, honestly incremental for right. a while. This is actually foundational. The hardware yeah. has to change to create the usage that people want out of AI out the edge. It's going to be really, really exciting. Fantastic. And um, like in our earlier conversation, we have talked about Firmware is also your secret sauce. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about firmware, how it helps in it? Yes, we have some great new firmware features, uh, including one button refresh, mm -hmm. which is a defrag uh, tool. Right. Um, as you use your device, you know, you write data, you write videos, you write, you write and read different applications. They become fragmented on the drive over time, just like on your like old PC, PCs. Right. And so the one button refresh automatically goes and aligns those and defrags everything so that it's essentially sequential read, mm. giving you improved uh, performance as you're running the device over time. Makes that device feels like it's new even after you've had it for six or 12 months. And, and that is automated and smart, right? Yes. It's, it doesn't happen when you're using an app or no, background. It doesn't. In fact, you want to be smart about that because you don't want to wear out the device by defragging it too often, right? right. So if you actually go in and you know, I could just see my 11-year-old pressing defrag all the time because he thinks it's making it make it run faster. Right. You know, if you do it too much, it's not good. So you don't want the user to be in there doing that. You want right. to have it automated. Our device can automatically sense the number of cycles that's been ran, automatically sense how defrag the how fragmented the device itself actually is, so that it can do it the optimal amount of times. Right. Yeah. So that's why automation is important there. Another great feature that we just launched is called HPM or high performance mode. Mm. This one is as if you're you know, driving on the streets outside, uh, you can probably drive 40 miles an hour out yeah. there, uh, but you can't right now, right? Because we have all this traffic uh, here in Barcelona at the show. Um, it's almost as if uh, you can take your car and just speed it through, yeah. similar to if you're opening an application. Mm. You know, when you're opening an application, the operating system could be doing data logging in the background, the file system could be, could be doing something. Um, other applications that are open in the background could also be writing or reading, um, maybe Google or something like that right. is, is, is always uh, transacting in the yes. background. With this tool, we will automatically look at what's going on in the bus and prioritize the reads for opening that app that the user really cares about. Mm. And it actually shows about a 25% improvement in mm. app, app loading time. So that's something that's noticeable. Something, you know, loading these big apps can take three to four seconds. Yeah. You know, if it takes three seconds versus four, you notice that. Yeah. So uh, we're really focused within our labs on what we can innovate and what we can do so that the end user themselves see something better. Right. So that our customers want to buy from us because, of course, we've got these features that are, are um, helping their customers want to buy from them. Great. And last question, uh, you talked about low power is big. You're going to be super important for AI. The first generation devices we tested, the battery life was not that great, but still, uh, I think you believe uh, faster read write can help that, help help with that. Yeah. So we're really focused on tops per watt, hmm. tera operations per second per watt. So it's not just how fast can you go, yeah. how fast can you go in a power efficient way. Power efficient. And that's what our, our engineers are really really focused on right now when we're looking at the memory and storage subsystem itself. Hmm. Um, the addition that you do get when you're running just speed, um, as you are on a new UFS4 device, is you allow the SOC to go into sleep mode faster. By transferring mm -hmm. the data from the storage to the device, to the SOC, you're getting it there faster, so the SOC only has to be active for a shorter period of time. Right. That actually saves a lot of okay. that. Yeah. So a lot of neat innovation coming down the pipe. Um, again. It's nascent, right? We're just now seeing AI start mm. to come, and we're having a lot of fun in our labs right now, running Llama 2 on phones, running, running different uh, foundational models on phones, and seeing what's, what the DRAM does, what the NAND does in those different devices, and how can we optimize them for the future. So That's great. this is going to be a fun story for quite a while. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks. a lot, Chris. Thank you, Neil. Thanks for the yeah. insights. Thank really you very much. Really good to talk to you. Thank you.